I'm Alice Loxton and I present documentaries over on History Hit TV. If you're passionate about all things history, sign up to History Hit TV. It's like Netflix, but just for history. We've got hours of ad-free documentaries about all aspects of the past. You can get a huge discount from History Hit TV. Make sure you check out the details below and use the code ABSOLUTEHISTORY, all one word when you sign up. Now, on with the show. In the early 1900s, our sailing boats traded across the globe. Dead ahead, 80 yards. And our fishing fleets fed the nation. It's a time that we often look back on with nostalgia. In it comes, in it comes quickly. They're in, brilliant boys. But what was it like for everyday communities who made their living from the sea? Four modern-day families are heading back over a hundred years to the start of the 20th century. Oh, gosh, look. To live for a month as a small fishing community on the wild, exposed coast of Anglesey. We're about to embark on the adventure of a lifetime. One hand, you're thinking it's pure magic, it's beauty. The next minute, you're carrying out five kids' worth of pee. In a time of hand-to-mouth existence... At the moment, we're skint. What are you looking for? I want something to eat. ...of hard physical graft... I'm not going to lie, I can think of easier ways to make a living. ...both at sea... Keep coming. It's caught. Rip it! Rip it! ...and at home. I am going to make lunch, I am going to wash your clothes, and I am going to make some bread. And then I am going to go cockling as well. The families will have to come together to help each other. We just wanted to extend our love to you. Will they fall in love with the past, or will they fall apart? This is our end now, isn't it? This is actually our end. On the 1900 island. I'm not giving up for a second, not a chance. Have you smashed it? The beautiful tidal island of Llanwyn off the coast of Anglesey in North Wales. A remote location jutting out into the Irish Sea. No one has lived here for the past 70 years, but all that's about to change. Just a few miles up the coast, Four families with a passion for the past and a longing to escape the demands of the modern world are about to spend the next month living as a 1900 fishing community. Oh, here we go. Yeah! The Davis family of seven are from the Wirral near Liverpool. Yay! They are 39-year-old mum, Natalie, 40-year-old customer services manager, Gavin, and their five children. My three times great-grandfather was a labourer in a fishing community just up the coast from Anglesey. I think the transition from 9-5 office worker to the harsh realities of a fisherman's existence, how I would cope with that, I honestly don't know. I always say, if I could just go back in time, just for a small time, if I could just have a little look at what it was like, what it was like to wear those clothes and things like that. I think I just want to wear a corset. Wow, you've been going out. The Powers are a Welsh-speaking family of five from Cardiff. It's a dozen, really. Their 40-year-old qualified accountant, Lydia, her 36-year-old husband, sports development officer and leader in their church, Gareth, and their three children. I think there'll be beauty in the simplicity mm. of the experience of life back then. From the age of 10 to 18, I lived in a little village called Llansaint. 
It wasn't unusual for us to go cockling and have supper that evening of fresh cockles. It is such a unique opportunity to get, get back to maybe some of the, the core basics and, and think and reassess priorities in life. Thirty-eight-year-old geography lecturer Kate Evans and thirty-four-year-old blacksmith Arwell John are a new couple from Swansea. I would love to get out in the fishing boats and have a go. The reality is I'm not sure that that was what women were able to do in that period. Arwell's lived off-grid for several years. I'm a practical guy, so I'm more than happy to, to sleep rough in the woods. And lots of my friends have gone, oh, when the zombies come, you're, we're going to knock on your door. You're going to be leading our team of survivors because you've got the skills out of it. It's going to be great. And the final family, a retired couple, 70-year-old Clive Barker and his 68-year-old wife Cheryl from Kent. People of our age don't get this sort of opportunity very often. I think it's a massive thing to be able to do. They've been married since 1968. And back then, Clive worked as a fisherman. I was fishing at Whitstable. I was there for probably nearly five years, I suppose. Looking back on it, I really enjoyed it. It was just, um, it was a very fulfilling way of life. As the families near the island, the conditions turn. An Atlantic weather front, Storm Alley, is sweeping in from the southwest. <laughs> <laughs> Heading for Sandwin, with winds gusting up to 80 miles an hour. Well, this is a glimpse of the next four weeks, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely speechless. stunning. It is just yeah. completely speechless. Yeah. You walk up and have a look. Arlo. Oh, gosh, look. <laughs> Welcome home. Oh, yeah. you got your name on it. Oh. Yeah, look. Oh. It's the powerhouse. It's the powerhouse. <laughs> Davis is on the end. End of terrace. All the wind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These four cottages, a boat shed on the beach, and a community hall which doubles up as a tavern and school will be home for the next month. Come on, Hello. <gasps> oh, my goodness. The Davis family are in cottage number one. Oh, the scales. It's a bit on the grim side, isn't it? Is that your bed? Is that your bed? Yeah. Gav. Yeah. <laughs> For Gavin and Natalie, 15 year old Ruby, Lily 13, Jude 9, Evan 4, and 2 year old Arlo, this will be a squeeze. Oh my goodness, that's steep. Be careful, bud. Please be careful. In 1900, it was common for parents and children to share rooms. <laughs> and even beds. Oh, it's gonna get cold in here, get wrapped up. For the Davises, hardship isn't completely unknown. The toughest period we've been through as a family, I lost my job. Okay, two hands. Okay, we've gotta get right over. That's it. We couldn't put food on the table for the kids. We were on the verge of food banks. Yeah. We were getting calls from our mortgage provider, yeah. credit card companies. And then on top of that, Natalie was pregnant. It really was awful. I feel like we're just coming out of it now. But there's always that niggle and doubt in the back of your mind that it, you know, it could happen again. And it can happen to anybody. We, we never thought it would happen to us. Oh, wow. Spacious. This is home. Next door are Kate and Arwell. Main bedroom. Ooh, yeah. We've been together just over a year now. No, what? Yeah, a year and a half. Year and a half, something like that. Something like that. Well, do you want a cup of tea then? We don't have children. We don't have any ties in that respect at the moment. Pantry. 
Living the life of a new couple in the 1900s means their cottage is sparse with few possessions. Well, the first thing that struck me was seeing my name on top of the door, the Johns. Yeah. Uh, so that's so in a way, I'm deleted out of that. And so, more than likely, we actually probably would have had to get married. Just, just to live together? Just, just to live yeah. in a community like this. I mean, it's not a big place. I think it'll be interesting to see how the, the freedoms I'm used to now as a 21st century woman will be different. But yeah. if it's the John household, then I'm the boss. Mm. Mm. Right, so he's done really there. Yeah, right yeah there, and a mat. Right wow. Oh, okay. okay. In cottage number three are the powers. Can I do shoes and rang there? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my dear cramp. Cramp. An incredible way to stay. Lydia and Gareth's children are seven year old Phoebe, five year old Dav, and Griff, who's just two. So, my hen, my tan, Phoebe's a Dav, a Griff, my tan, a minvenin. So Phoebe's a dad. Their 1900 home is a world away from their three-bed suburban semi. I think for, for the children, it's going to be a massive change, uh, a massive adjustment for them. I guess they don't fully understand what it is that we're, we're leading them into. This is where you wash your hands every day. What do you think of that, Phoebe's? There's no tap, there's not any water. It's basic, but it's... it's unsweet. <laughs> I would hate to go there and just be on my own in the house. I'd love to say, come on, come over to mine, or I'll come over to yours. I would love for us women within that community to do things together. Oh, wow. wow this is... And in cottage number four are the Barkers. Oh, it's lovely. It's lovely. It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's pretty big, isn't it? Yeah. Knitting wool. Oh, it's all there, look. Oh. Scissors. Yeah. As the oldest family, Clive and Cheryl's home reflects a lifetime of acquiring possessions and skills. If anyone's cold, I can knit them a shawl. I can knit and I can sew. And if anyone needs their children looked after, then I can do that as well. <laughs> the Barkers own three children have long since flown the nest, and along with their eight grandchildren, are spread across the world. We love them. We don't see enough of them. I'd like to see them more, obviously. But uh, it's great when we see them. It'd be really good to be as part of a bigger big, community, big community yeah. and to help each other. I could see us sitting here at night, mm. playing cards, and. Pipe, clay pipe. You don't smoke. <laughs> I might take it out for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby, have you seen your knickers? <laughs> it's time to strip away the last vestiges of modern day life. Watch. I'm assuming I'm not going to keep the watch. As the families remove their 21st century clothing. Right, dive in. And put on their 1900 attire. <laughs> Oh. It's my it's my knickers. I just realised. Oh, not only knickers. These are crutches knickers. Free traders, they used to call. So I can pay you standing up. <laughs> but not everyone's finding it quite so amusing. Fancy them and Hoffy there. Men itchy. Men eating cravy. <laughs> The clothing would have been homemade, from rough wool, for warmth and durability, but not necessarily for comfort. Well, Griff's drachan or tea. We haven't had anything cute. The men's clothes aren't that different from today. Like you're from a bad boy band of fishermen. <laughs> but it's a world apart for the women. Right. Nah. Nah, 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 nah. They have to wear up to 13 items of clothing, which can weigh well over a stone. They've got jackets as well. This, this is my blouse. It's not a jacket. I haven't got my skirt on yet. Really? No. <laughs> I thought that was it. At the back here, those buttons can be undone. That's good. And it makes a full dress. Well, that's good. I like that. Mm. 
You really look the part. <laughs> Do you look good? You look amazing. <laughs> As a stormy dusk settles over the island, the families shelter in their cottages, preparing for their first night. Come on, Dad. Watch out, now we're gonna burn ourselves. Stand here for me. Go on, go on. Yes. The stove is the heart of the 1900 home and needs to be kept alight day and night. It's their only source of heat, hot water and cooking. Just needs gentle encouragement here and there. That's all it needs. You just need to kind of know how these things work. Good God, you need to do this early, because I can't see now. That's just what I thought. And with no electricity, the families will have to rely on candles and lanterns. Ah, you time for bed. <laughs> <laughs> It's the start of day two, and Storm Alley is still pounding the UK coastline. The waters near Thandwind were once described by Admiral Nelson as one of the most treacherous stretches of sea in the world. And with gale force conditions today, fishing is out of the question. With no mod cons, just keeping on top of home life is work enough. They have to brave the elements to use the toilets, get coal, and fetch water from the one standpipe serving all four cottages. It's like an amazing morning. One, one hand you're thinking it's, it's pure magic, it's beauty. The next minute you're carrying out five kids' worth of pee. Who wants to clean the chamber pots? Not me. Not me. Right, are we ready to get you dressed? No. Good boy. We can go outside then, can't we? Yeah. Whoa. The little ones just slept right through. But it was it was windy, it was noisy, and that was scary at times, wasn't yeah, it? Was yeah. it? But it's so dark. Yeah, it just really is just it's black. You just couldn't see a thing. <clears throat> the waves look really rough, so. I don't think the men will be venturing out on any sailboats today, which I think is a really nice thing, actually. I think it'll be nice to have Gareth around the home just as we settle in and to help settle the kids. OK. Nice. Yes? What did you want to wash these dishes in? A bowl or...? Yeah, just something big enough for a bucket or a bowl or...? There's got to be a better way of doing all this, surely. It's hand soap. That's your washing up. Do you know what I say your? I didn't notice that. What's that all about? <laughs> I love you, girl. In 1900, women and girls were responsible for all domestic chores, but not every household's following the social norms just yet. Oh, isn't Daddy good? Look how Daddy's got a fire roaring. It looks brilliant. As well as adjusting to male and female roles, the modern families will have to live frugally. In 1900, families tried to save money and stockpile provisions to survive lean times. Oh, do you want me to help, Mum? I don't know. I don't know what it is. Each family has been given a small amount of cash and food. Yes, it like, and that's got a bone in it. <laughs> With rationing. It should see them through the first couple of days. Vegetables, milk, milk, milk. apples. We've got cheese, we've cheese got butter, butter, lard. They also have a small vegetable patch to supplement any fish they catch. Have you gone? Yeah. But with the storm still raging and fishing too dangerous, 
They'll have to manage their limited supplies and cash very carefully. In 1900, 60% of the weekly budget went on food. I had a look at what was in the house already. And if I do this today, I can top it up and keep it going tomorrow. And then we can just add stuff to it. It's lovely looking out and seeing the children running yeah, by. It's so nice. nice. Yeah. For 70 year old Clive, life's less carefree. He's developed a case of gout. Just burning. It's a recurring illness he's had for years. This is where the problem is, on the ball of the foot here. If you touch it, it's very hot. The big toe here is very swollen, oh, and it's now spreading to those two. You can't put your foot on the ground, it's so tender. I can't really get a shoe on at the moment. With modern medicine, Clive's gout can be managed. But at the start of the 20th century, minor illnesses could easily become fatal. Life expectancy was shockingly low. 48 years for men and 52 for women. It's extremely painful. And you, he really needs to be sitting with his foot up, but he won't. So yes, I do worry about it. It's bad timing for the Barkers. In 1900, there was no formal social support. Until Clive's condition improves, he won't be able to fish, to eat or sell. Look at these waves. Oh, yeah. Whoa! Kids, don't go too far. When the fishing families of 1900 were stormbound, the men would take whatever manual labor was available. While their wives often had second jobs to supplement the family income. That's a flower, and there's lard in there as well. Keen home baker Natalie will run the village bakery. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. This is different to any bread I've sort of made before. I just don't really have a clue what I'm doing. As a qualified accountant, Lydia's bookkeeping skills will help her run the small shop. Cheryl, potatoes, bacon and pears. OK, that's great. The Barkers will use the community hall to run a tavern in the evenings. Can you work out how many tots in a bottle? Yeah, 25 tots, I expect, if you really mean. And for Arwell, who grew up on a farm, and his partner, Kate, there's a flock of chickens. <laughs> Apart from fish, <laughs> eggs are one of the only other sources of protein readily available on the island. Hello, Merged. Oh, loads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine eggs. At a penny each in 1900 prices, eggs were a valuable commodity. We're made. We're fine. I think the people who got the best deal here would be Arwen and Kate with all the eggs. Because the, the thing is, the, the level of profit isn't massive in the shop. I'm getting 10% profit, which is tiny. They're getting 100% profit. I think everybody's money may end up funneling their direction. <laughs> even if we're hungry, even if we're tired, we've got to maintain the unity of the community because that's our uh, that's key. Yeah. That's yeah. key to us all flourishing here, I yeah. think. We're not going to collect eggs. There are eggs. Oh you mean as a community or as a team, you know, if we start to fragment, then we're in, uh, yeah, we're in, trouble, then. We're in trouble, so that, can't, uh, that yeah. can't happen. As day three dawns, the sea is still too rough to fish. The families are down to their last three meals. But that doesn't seem to bother Cheryl. We're having <coughs> porridge, followed by bacon, eggs, and fried bread. In the Davis house, with seven mouths to feed, the mood is very different. Are you hungry? Me. 
Everything worries me. Everything worries me and everything keeps me awake at night. How much food we have. You know, are their bellies full enough going to bed? No. Just make them up. So you give the kids the best and we just pick up the scraps and we'll like fry up the fat, the rind, and we'll eat the rind. Yeah, can you make sure you're eating, please? I will do, yeah. I just tighten my corset, I feel a bit hungry. <laughs> just tighten it a bit and that gets rid of it. Hello? Hello. Oh, hello. Who's this? My name's Joe. I'm your shipwright. Joe Ormond has over 20 years' experience as a boat builder, and he'll be working in the boat shed on the beach for the next four weeks. So you're going to be working on your own down there? Have you got some help? I'll be on my own most of the time, I think, yeah. but I will, there will be days when I'll need another set of hands. You know. right. Throughout this era, shipwrights were to be found in most of the fishing villages dotted around the coast. Yeah, I guess you guys will all be out trying to find food and fishing and... Predominantly, yeah. yeah. Not today, though, right? Eh? No, not today. If the weather's like this and we can't get out to sea, then he said there might be a bit of work for us to do, so we get down there and earn a few bob, I suppose. Hopefully he pays well. Oh, it's not Bob the minimum wage. <laughs> Don't do a lot of uh, iron work. Are you the blacksmith? I'm a blacksmith, yeah. yes. OK, that might be a kind of handy. Yeah. Arwell's skills could be just what Joe needs. So, is this all the stuff you got? Do you want hand carrying it down? Or? Oh, you give me a hand, carrying the bag down, that'd be nice. Yeah. I'm sure we can work something out between us. Yeah, no, that'd be good. Office workers Gareth and Gavin have missed out on an opportunity. It's great fetching everything, and I like keeping the stove going and all that, but I'm itching to get on a boat now. I feel like I need to contribute something. Other than fetching water and keeping things hot. When you've got the weather against you at home, it doesn't make any difference, just hop in the car and go to the shops. Here, it's so much stops you. Our main income's going to be gav fishing. That in this weather, it's just not going to happen. Oh, I, need, I need to back it. So you, you, you only put it close to the nail so it just takes the bounce out of it. Oh, OK, yeah. you're not, right, gotcha. So if I, if I nip along there, drill yep. those... OK. I mean, have you been out in this, this kind of weather, or...? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you go out there? I probably would, but... Would you? Not, not far. I don't think you'd last long out there. When will I know when it's safe? When it's nice and flat and there's no wind. <laughs> the look at the raw power that nature is unbelievable, but at the same time, it's so frustrating because we can't get out there as fellas and provide for our families. We know that all our money is out there and we're stuck on shore, unable to get anywhere near it. And it is a little bit. I'm starting to do my head in. You all right, son? Today was the last of the meat. I've got just over half a dozen eggs. I've just got to wait for the men to go out in the boat. The kids had a little bit of a wobble before they fell asleep, and Phoebe started crying and said, Mommy, I don't like it, I want to go home. It's a new day, and overnight, the storm has finally blown itself out. After three days of no fishing and food supplies running desperately low, at last, there's a welcome sight on the horizon. I can see a boat, and it is heading this way. It's getting bigger, which means it's getting closer. So I can only assume that's ours. Jude, can you tell your dad the boat's uh, on the way in? A fishing vessel's been spotted off the coast and is heading for Llanwyn. It's calm everywhere I can see, even out in the, in the rough part yesterday. That's looking pretty flat. 
So I'm just getting quite excited now. I'm going to go out fishing. First time. It's going to be good. I am feeling like it's first day at school. Yeah. So the nerves are starting to kick in. You know, it's a little bit strange. Because huh? I have no experience at all of, of fishing whatsoever. Just please, anything today. If there's anything you can... I don't want any, like, I don't care if you, how much you're wretched, how much you're sick, please bring home fish. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm, gonna, I'm really going to go really for it. really need it for everyone. I'm going to go for it. He'd better come back with a decent catch, because those kids are hungry. Really, really hungry. They're really struggling now. One of the fishing boat crew is on his way to pick up the men. It's time to say goodbye. Do you want goodbye, Daddy? Yeah. Just that. I touched the tigers. Good job. Yeah. Be safe. Of course, I'll be safe. I'll be absolutely fine. You're now more worried than I am. Fishing was a dangerous job. In 1901 alone, more than 2,500 people drowned in UK waters, and almost every British fishing community contained families who'd lost loved ones at sea. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I think we're just a teacher, do you, OK? Yeah, well, I'm going to teach you. I just hope they can go on there and be heroic, you know, pulling out fish after fish, rather than slipping around and falling on my backside. Ta-da! I am excited, I'm looking forward to it, but it is a step into the unknown, and I think I am going to be very far outside of my comfort zone. The men are going out to sea in a nobby, a type of fishing boat first used in the early 1800s, and one that was found along the west coast of Britain, from Cardigan Bay up to the Scottish border. Yeah, and you can use these lines now, push the two boats together as you stand up, and then you can step up into here. Okay, one, Nobbies two, like this didn't have engines. They relied on sail power, and fishermen had to be as good at sailing as they were at fishing if they were to survive. Hi, so we've got Gavin. Yeah. Oh, well. Gareth. Huh? Gareth. Gareth. Nice to meet you. Nice Gareth, Gavin and Arwell have no real sailing knowledge, so Stuart Gibson, a sailor with over 30 years of experience, is skipper. Nice and calm, bit of breeze, good to learn, and more importantly, I think, good to go fishing. And Mickey Beachy's in charge of fishing. The fishing industry is probably the most or one of the most dangerous industries you can you can be involved in mickey's been fishing along the welsh coast since he was eight and is now a professional fisherman that's why i was telling these boys they're going to concentrate on what they're doing okay it's a tough industry doesn't matter what era you're in in 1900 life jackets were virtually unheard of and many fishermen couldn't swim those that fell overboard often drowned. If we have uh, someone overboard, we do actually need to um, put out a distress. The men are wearing modern life jackets on top of their traditional clothing as the only concession to the 21st century. Throat up first, pulling both together. Go, Gav. Do it, Gav. Nice. Nice one, Gav. Good boy, Gav. I just thought that means so. You did. See that? And I'm knackered. <laughs> that was amazing. The men are heading out into deeper water, where mackerel tend to feed at this time of year. Okay, the staysail is still pushing us around. Now you can let the staysail go on this one. Keep it straight now. And we want to be heading towards the far land. OK. Three miles out, and it's time to start fishing. Have any of you boys seen anything like this, these before? 
Only little kits for crabbing, you've seen the uh, seaside shops. Right, okay. Today, the men will be using a very simple hand line. So basically, you've got your frame that obviously, as, it's, as you can see, you've got a leaded weight at the end, and then you've got a series of hooks. As you can see, they're tied up with a feather, right? Once in the water, the feathers look like small sand eels, tempting bait for mackerel and herring. I'll put the line out first now, so you can see what's happening. Traditionally, a net would have been used alongside the hand lines, but Mickey's decided to take the training one step at a time. You just feed in your line out slowly like that. Give it a tug, because you may hit mackerel straight away. Finding fish is a mix of hard graft and good luck. They hope to hit a shoal, which could be near the surface or deeper down. When you catch something, this is what you're going to feel. OK? OK? Yeah. Happy with that? Just give it a whirl. I will be watching them closely to see that they're doing it right. Hopefully, by the end of four weeks, they will all be able to cook on their own. And when they get that first catch, it'll be like, all oh, the Christmases come at once. But first, they have to learn to cope with the swell. I'm fishing and holding me breakfast in. Untangle that. Multitasking. Particularly Gareth. Those are fine. Let the line go again. And let's get uh, some fish in then. In 1900, mackerel was in plentiful supply. Tight lines, boys, is what they say. And it wasn't uncommon to land a thousand fish in a day. There's nothing on there. We'll persevere for that one and just keep going. Nowadays, fishermen still rely on trial and error, but with much reduced fish stocks, they also have modern tools like sonar to increase their chance of catching. But living as 1900 fishermen means that Mickey and the men have to rely on their wits and experience alone. We've now reached the point where this is the real hand to mouth existence. So it, it's pride, really. I don't want to go back empty-handed. Come on, must be something in here. Seeing the kids uh, having full plates and full bellies and, and sleeping without that, that rumbling going on. So, yeah, it's, it's of huge importance. Whoa, there's nothing else. There's just nothing. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Should we go and have some carrot? No. So we keep eating, having bits of raw carrot. I don't know whether he's going to be back for tea. I don't know whether he's going to be back before the kids go to bed tonight. No idea. Gav came back with a, a real big catch. That'd be amazing. I think that would boost his confidence. I think that would make him feel better because he hasn't really been able to do anything like that yet. And we, we really need it. We really need it to eat. As the weather takes a turn for the worse, the men are relying on traditional oil skins to keep them dry. This is more like it. This is proper fishing. How are we doing, Gar? Oh, a little bit rough, to be honest. A bit crazy. And now the swell is increasing. Focus on that horizon. That's what I'm trying to do. It's not really working. Let's have a bloody look here. Uh, cool. See if there's any bloody fish here. After four hours out at sea, they still haven't caught a single fish. Research shows that UK fish stocks have fallen by 94% since 1889. Back in 1900, you wouldn't have had the, the, the big sort of factory trawlers that suck up shoals of mackerel in one go with so all sorts of technology to, to assist them that they've got these days. It's the sign of the times, I'm afraid.
This is the right way. Incredibly frustrating at the moment. I think we had visions of um, dragging a load of fish in to eat and make some money, but right now, it doesn't seem the luck's with us. It only goes to show how precarious the life of a fisherman can be. Okay, boys, we're going to get the lines in. Unfortunately, we haven't caught anything. So, bear in mind the bad weather coming towards us. So, we'll try and move ahead of it and make our way in. It's a shame it is, but what I'm most not looking forward to is going back to the village now empty handed. I'm disappointed that I'm caught fish. I am liking the thought of going home. <laughs> the whole community will rise and fall on how we do on the boats. We're all in this together. We've all got to work together to make this work so that our community back home can thrive and be well fed. up to see them. I hope it's good news. I hope they've got loads of fish with them. Excited! I'm so excited. See what fish he's got. Apprehensive. I mean, they're late back. That may be a good sign. Are you hungry? Yes. Oh, it's staying that way. Is it? Not one fish. Really? Oh. Yep. Nothing all day. Nothing at all. Do you not get anything? Are you going to get them? No, nothing. Oh, you're out there all day. Carry on, carry on, carry on moving forward. Come on. Carry on. With no catch, the families will have to make their remaining supplies stretch even further. I'm just, I'm just so sorry I've not been able to bring don't, anything back. Please don't, don't worry. We're all dreading coming back because we've been talking about having fish to sell, fish to eat, to come back with absolutely nothing after putting in so much effort is a killer. I think back in modern day life, we're very much paid for our time. You know, we're paid for a sick day, we're paid for holidays. We've now got no earnings for what has been a lot of effort. So the, the contrast between then and, and now is huge. He's massively proud of, you know, providing for his family. So, yeah, this will this will hit him hard. So it's got to be just, it's fine, it's moved over. Another day, and with the sea once again too rough to use the boat, the women decide to try their luck on shore instead. They're going cockling. It's lovely to get out, actually. I haven't seen the island yet, so it's really nice to see her out. The cockle beds on the mainland near Llanwyn have been worked since pre-Roman times. The nearest is just over a mile away. And while the tide's out, they can walk there. You're looking for the wet sand where the tide's gone right out and there's a tiny bit of water left. I think, let's walk around there and see if the sand's different over there. No idea what I'm doing. I'm following the lead completely. Cockles live in the sand, filtering seawater for nutrients. They were particularly popular in the early 1900s, 
and fetched a good price at market. What's the new clues at the manuals? Yeah, I'm a fighting well spurt. Ah, oh, look, a spit. Look, look, look. Look. Oh, oh. There's loads of spits. You're going to get in quickly. As the cockles burrow down, they often spit out sand, a telltale sign of their location. You make it my way. Some of them would chuck it all in. See, see all those bubbles? Traditionally, they're raked up and passed through sieves that allow the small ones to drop back onto the beach. This is nothing. You can see, you know. Nothing. I just feel like we're wasting time. Here we are, there's bubbles here. A rich cockle bed can contain more than a million cockles per acre. As long as you know where to look. We found it, did it? Nope, nothing. Oh, oh man. man! It's really hard. Oh, Natalie, your face says it all. Yeah, cold, wet. Are you cold? Yeah. You know, when I think of my village, it was a half a mile walk down to the beach. We all knew where the cockles were, well, they all knew. And that information was handed down generation to generation. So you knew where to go. And it was a matter of just scooping up bags and bags full of cockles. And it didn't take, didn't take all day. The women have been out for hours, and it's in danger of being another fruitless journey. Lydia, it's a mussel bed. Huh? Mussels. Mussels? Here, yeah. Mussels weren't worth as much as cockles in 1900. You know what you think? I reckon we can almost fill your basket with these, don't you? Yeah but could be sold as bait to fishermen. So they're very dirty, but they'll clean off, so... Yes! We were all starting to feel a little bit dejected. We just sort of thought, another waste of trip. But um, we're going home with something. I think they should be pretty impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Coming in fast. It is coming in. OK, let's it get is. down. Yeah. With a good haul of mussels, now word can be sent to the local fishmonger. Well, we went to the limit today, didn't yeah. you? But we kept going and we found. And now I need a cup of tea and a pea, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Day six, and there's lots of work to be done if the community is to make the most of the fishmonger's visit this afternoon. Oh, you women are amazing. I know they're horribly messy. They're going to take a hell of a lot of cleaning, but we can do that. Yeah, it's a bit of a personal challenge for us all. I know the tune. Yeah, I know the tune. Gathered in the Davis house, all but one of the families are hard at work, preparing the mussels. It is easy if you go down from that end down. I think so, yeah. It's a labour-intensive job, but the cleaner the mussels, the higher their value. Hello, see you later. Ta-da! While the rest of the community work on the mussels, Arwell has his own plans. For the past few days, he's been assisting Joe, the shipwright, hoping to earn some extra wages. Hiya, Joe. Oh, well. Okay? Did you have yeah. for breakfast then? An egg. Just an egg. An egg. Yeah, could, right. have, could have done with another one. 
There's something you might want to have with your eggs oh, tomorrow good morning. Man. Straight out of my garden, dug last night in the rain. They taste really good. Oh, thank you very much. And I got you some some apples. Oh, it's to say thanks for the help. Phil. Well, thanks, Joe. That's really good. One last thing, peppercorn. Oh. Yes, I'm gonna give you a hug for that. <laughs> That's good. That is amazing. So enjoy. Nice one, Joe. Cheers. Well, thanks for your help. Excellent. Cheers. Tra. It's a great boost for the Johns. Good news. Oh, amazing. So, uh, cooking apples, they say they're good for stewing. Yeah. But best of all... Oh. This is what I think. This looks like Christmas. Oh, it's... Oh! Pepper. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I even gave him a hug. <laughs> In the 1900s, pepper was a highly valued spice and would have been a luxury for the working classes. It was often referred to as black gold. Good job, Mr. John. Die young. They were excellent, really pleased with that. It's not for so long. Put around with some knives, dear. You're not helping us. Um, I've got a few jobs I want to get done down the boatyard, but I'll, I'll come back up as soon as I can then. Okay. Um, what, what job? What do you do down the boatyard then, huh? Um, well, yesterday we stuck all the ribs uh, into the boat. How was he paying you? Food. Uh, food, yeah. Oh. So, got the pepper this morning. That's oh. Yeah, which has made my day. I'm, I'm really chuffed for that. Do you have uh, enough to share with your cook? Uh, check with Kate. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not being funny here, but you're down at the boatyard getting something. We're here preparing these, and you're going to benefit from this, so we all need to benefit. You know, we need to share everything, don't we? You will share what you've got when you are. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm happy to share, yeah. Yeah. But I've no idea how much we've got. I do feel a little bit bad that I've got all the pepper. I'm in such a good mood that I mentioned it to everyone, basically. Everyone that I've seen. Uh, and I think a lot of people are getting a little bit jealous about that. You can't have one person taking everything and the others sort of starving at their feet, you know. You all have to share. I could share it or I could just sell it. Uh, I could just keep it all to myself. We all chip in. We all give whatever we're not yes. using. It might be a good bartering tool. And if I can calm someone down by going, yeah, here's a, here's a corn and pepper. Shut up. It might be a bit useful. I'll check with Kate first, cos she's looking after all the food, but it would be nice to share some of that wealth around, if possible. After six days of rough weather, finally the sun's out. And it looks as though the better weather has boosted community morale. Kate and Arwell have decided to give some of their food to their neighbours. We're sharing, that's the whole point. I mean, we are all trying to share. Without being unkind, they just needed a little nudge. That was all. So, and I said, <laughs> and I felt awful afterwards, uh, having yeah, said it. Yeah. I did feel terrible, <laughs> but there we are. It's done, it's cleared the air, it's, um, and we've got the apples. That's the main thing, we've got the <laughs> apples. <laughs> So the fishmonger's on his way, and I'm really hoping he gives us a good price for the mussels we collected yesterday, because that was, that was hard work. We're all cut to ribbons with uh, scraping all the barnacles off and everything. Yes. It's a very big moment. It'd be our first, first earnings. outside income. And we can stock up with a few basics again. A bit of bacon. Pay my tab in the shop as well. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Heard, the fishmonger, comes from the nearby town of Carnarvon. He's the fourth generation of his family to run the business. Hello there. Hi. Hey. Hi, John. Hi, John. 
Hi. Hello. 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 Shimmer oil. Right there. Good, good. Mr. Her, Dr. Narvan. We've got some mussels. Are they any good? They're delicious. Fre fresh. 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 The best fresh. Fresh when? When did you the pick mountain? them? Yesterday. Yesterday. Alongside running the household finances, it was traditional for the women, also known as fishwives, to deal with the fishmonger. We've, cl we've cleaned them and we're all up ready for you. And Lydia's been nominated by the families to be chief negotiator. So there's no barnacles on them. No barnacles. And we've, we've picked out all the small ones, so they should all be a good size for you. Really plump and full, full of meat, shell. were they? Full of meat. Full, full of meat. Absolutely full. The yeah. nicest mussels I've ever tasted. What do you think? You haven't put stones in the bottom to make the weight up, have you? Not at all. Not at all. Are you sure? You can pour them out into another bucket you can if you like them to into test. A bag, whatever. Well, we'll tip them into a sack and we'll see how much is in the sack. Okay, okay. great. Okay. Yes. Okay. What would they call that? Third of a sack? Half. Half a sack there. Half. Well, you've got to tie the top oh, off. You yes. can't do that. Half there. Half. Half. Half a sack, definitely. I'd say a third. No, it's much more than a third. Well, for this time, because it's your first time, we'll pay half a sack. Can we do just over? No, 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 no. Are we happy Are we all happy on that? That's half fine. a sack, Four yes. Half a sack, wonderful. Yeah. Do you have I usually pay five. Do you know what? As the sun is out, and you're clearly impressed with our first catch, we'll go for six a sack, and we'll take the three of you today. <laughs> <laughs> and it's lovely. Oh! <laughs> it's lovely doing business with you. For the families, it's finally payday. But after two days of hard graft, they've only managed to earn nine pennies per household. The equivalent in modern day money of just three pounds. Thank you, bye bye. Thank you. Although after a week of nothing, it's a sweet success. Yes. Excellent. That is a great income from those muscles. I think the children are after getting some bonbons from the, the power shop. Um, I think Gav has already spent it in the pub tonight. Seven, eight, nine. This will get every client open that bar up quickly while they're holding cash. <laughs> <laughs> For me, what's the best thing for us to spend on? You know, yeast and things like that, so I can carry on baking bread. 90 each. 90 each? Yeah. Great, thank you. That's good. To have the cash in our hands, it was worth it. Yeah, great. Next time. Come on, boys, pull them in. The men hit the seas again. Oh. There's someone on that. And get their first taste of success. Yay! But tension surfaces in the community. Could be our, our big owner and their big owner. Well, I'd, rather it, I'd rather it was our big owner. Yeah, yeah. There needs to be a spirit of generosity amongst the community. What are you looking for? Oh! Because you cannot have children going hungry. And life on the 1900 island gets the better of Gavin. Half a cheese sandwich in 24 hours. Just can't feed ourselves. Simple as that.